Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you how to use the Yamaha MG10 XU audio console. In our inventory, we have a bunch of these consoles, and we also have about 15 of the MG10 consoles, which is the little brother to this. Those consoles don't have effects, and they don't have the USB output. But with all our Yamaha MG10 consoles, they've seen about five to 7,000 events over the years. Uh, we've never had a single hardware related issue with any of them and now I'm going to show you how to use this console. This console is built for live streaming, video conferencing, live events or hybrid events where you're running a real life in-person event as well as using the USB output for a live stream for online guests as well. So to get started with this console, we're first going to plug it in. So on the back of this console you'll see a three pin proprietary kind of power input here. It's a locking input. When I first got this console, I was a little annoyed that it wasn't IEC, uh, but as we've worked with it a lot over the years, uh, you come to really love the locking uh, connector here. And we're going to make sure the on switch is on, and now we're going to plug the USB output to the computer. Now this USB out output on the back of this console is a two in, two out. So that means it'll send a stereo output out of the console through USB, plus it'll send two channels back to the console if we want to use a laptop for playback or anything like that. So I'm going to go over to my laptop here and just get a recording going. We open up QuickTime, go new audio recording, hit the drop down, select MG10, then hit record. That way I can record everything coming from the console, put on the video so you can hear it after the fact. That's one super cool thing about this console is you don't have to do that with the XLR output. Now that USB output that we're using for this, it mirrors the stereo outputs that's in the top right here. So we have two XLR outputs. So if you're running the powered speakers, you can just use the XLR cable to do that. Or if you're using quarter inch outputs, uh, you can do that as well. These are all the same mix, so that's important to note. Now before we get started, it's important to no double check that all the knobs are starting off where they should be. So all the white knobs should be turned all the way down. Anything Christmas colored should be in the 12 o'clock position straight up like they are. So the green and red are all straight up. These yellow knobs can be turned down. And then we're going to start with the stereo output. So obviously before we do anything on this board, this board will not make sound until we turn up the main output. So we're going to turn that up to the triangle here. That triangle is the zero position on this board, also known as unity. Uh, it's the same as if you're using an audio console with faders, you're going to turn it up to zero. That's the best starting point for your main output. Obviously throughout your event, you can turn that up or down as you see fit, but that gives you the most volume to noise ratio and you're going to be the happiest starting in that position, but you can adjust it as you need. So now that we have that set, I'm going to show you how to connect a microphone to this console. So up in the top right here, we have four combi jacks. These combi jacks can accept both quarter inch and XLR cables. For the purposes of today, the microphone that we're going to use is XLR. And then I'm going to show you how to use a line level quarter inch input as well. So I'm going to grab my XLR cable. And I'm going to plug that into the top of the first channel here where it says number one. Then I'm going to connect it to my microphone. Now all these knobs work in vertical channel strips. So once you do one, then that same information, uh, you use the same technique on the next channels as well. There's no changes there. So it's just, you just work your way left to right across the board. So now that we're talking into this microphone, we're going to do the same thing with the level on this channel. We're going to turn it all the way up to that triangle position, which is zero or unity. Uh, that, again, that's the best starting point, but we're going to notice here that we're not seeing any sound movement on the output. That's because we might have to improve the gain here. So the gain controls the preamp. The preamp is what's responsible in taking this tiny little signal coming from the microphone. It's just a tiny little vibration that gets converted to electrical signal. And then as we turn this up, it will take that signal and it will amplify it. So then we can process it, we can compress it, we can change the EQ, we can add effects, we can pan it, and then we can set the main level output, which goes all the way to the stereo output. 
So as we can see here, if we put the gain to the 12 o'clock position, we're getting a pretty good healthy level here on the uh, meters. So we want this definitely kind of around that minus six to zero position. Uh, sometimes minus 10 is not bad. It's right where we have it is a great starting point. If you had this connected to speakers, you'd have a better out feel for how loud it is, but I can't really hear it right now because it's just going straight to the laptop. So we're just gonna keep going. I can see that we have level and that's good enough for me for right now. Now also at the top of this, we have uh, two buttons here. I did miss the high pass filter was already on, so I'm gonna turn that off now. And what that did was that did a low cut all the way up to 80 hertz. So it just cleans up some of the mud that's common with vocals. Now I'm gonna click it back on. With vocals, the name of the game when you're setting up your microphone is to try clean it up. You want it to sound nice and crisp. Sometimes for studio microphones, you want it completely flat, completely wide open, in which case turn that high pass filter off and leave the EQ straight up and you're just gonna get that full body of sound. If you're mixing live vocals and there's just a lot of competing sources, it can be really helpful to put a high pass filter on each of the vocal mics. It'll just make it sound a little bit cleaner, so keep that in mind. Next to that, we have this 26 decibel pad. We don't use that for microphone inputs. We would use that if we're plugging in a line level source, like a drum machine or a keyboard or something like that. Now I'm gonna talk about EQ a little bit. Uh, some people go crazy with the EQ, and the secret with EQ is less is more. If you're having to make really big moves with your EQ, you typically have bigger problems somewhere else. But if you are getting audio feedback, a really good place to start is to turn the highs down just a little bit like that. Or sometimes it's in the mid-range, you'll turn that down a little bit like that. Uh, if you want to clean up the low end of this, you can turn that down. But it's important to note that if you turn all three bands down, what you're essentially doing is you're lowering the, free, the volume of all the frequencies. You're essentially just turning the volume of this microphone down. So please keep that in mind. If you just keep turning these down, the overall signal is gonna keep getting quieter and quieter. You can see the level dropped by about 10 dB when I did that. So I'm gonna put them back up to where they were in the starting position. So with EQ, less is more. Now we're gonna talk about effects. Same thing for effects. Uh, some people really love reverb. Sometimes people use reverb to hide bad vocals. So again, uh, effects is less is more, um, but I'm gonna show you how they work. So you're gonna turn the effects engine on. You're gonna turn the effects master all the way up to that triangle position there, that zero or unity. We're gonna select this uh, effects number one. So you can click it, select it, back to one and then click it. So uh, now we'll turn our effects up on this channel and you should hear a reverb coming in. Now I'm gonna turn it back down. Now I'm gonna go to effects 24 and hit enter. And now I'm gonna turn that effect back up. So what this is gonna do is it's a pitch change, number 24, this little legend here lets you know what you're doing. That means that we can use this white knob to change how the pitch change is working. So see if you can hear that, should be pretty obvious. And then I'll turn that effect back off and the main effects back off. We're not gonna use that anymore. So that's how you set up a microphone. So if you're doing four microphones, you can just keep going. The only difference on this board is that uh, the compression is only on two different channels. Uh, we didn't talk about compression yet. So to, what compression does is it makes your quiet sounds louder and it makes your loud sounds quieter. So if you have a singer that's really quiet and then they start going crazy, uh, by turning up the compression, it reduces the dynamic range of their vocals, puts them into a tighter window, and it makes it a lot easier for you to mix so you're not constantly turning the volume up and down all the time. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn that back down. And if you're using a condenser microphone, something that requires 48 volts of phantom power, you can click that on as well. Now if you ever plug in a microphone that's not working, chances are it has to do with phantom power. That's usually the first thing that you check. So now I'm gonna show you how to plug in an input like a phone or an iPod. So to do that, you're gonna need a cable like this. This goes uh, dual quarter inch uh, to headphone jack. I have a link in the description below if you wanna see where to find these or how much they cost. So you plug that in. We're gonna plug that into three and four. Then we're gonna plug the headphone jack into this lightning adapter. Then we're gonna plug that lightning adapter in the bottom of the phone. And I'm gonna hit play on the music. So you're gonna see here that we don't have any level moving, and that's because we haven't turned the volume up. 
Now, we're gonna turn the volume up. And as we do that, we're gonna see that we're getting pretty good level where we want it to be. We didn't make it to zero, uh, but that's okay. We still have the level where we need it to be. Getting to zero isn't make or break, uh, so don't freak out if you don't make it all the way to that triangle. It's just a good guide. Uh, where it is, is good as well. Now, if you're really stressing and you want all your knobs pointed the same way, you can click on the pad, so that'll reduce the overall volume, and then you can turn those up, and then you can increase the gain, to again get that signal back where we were. So there's two or three different ways to approach this. Usually for a line level signal, it doesn't make sense to add a pad, then re-add gain. Uh, so I would just turn those down and then uh, do something like that. I think that's a better way to do it. One, another thing to keep in mind is that since we brought in a stereo input, this will be the right, this will be the left. We'll want to pan those to be widen it. Otherwise, we're just having two copies of the same thing, if that makes any sense. Another way to do uh, a music input like this is to use one of the stereo inputs over here. So we're going to use this line 5-6. We're going to turn those channels down that we just finished with. Everything's back the way it was. So with this line 5-6, you're going to see that we don't even have a gain on this because it's accepting line level. It's already ready for it. There's no pads. There's no gain. It's just ready for that line level input. We're going to turn it up. There you can see that we're getting, uh, might be the end of the song here where it's a bit quieter, but you can see that we're getting the volume that we need out of that channel there. Next, I want to talk about channels 9 and 10 here. So if you're using this USB cable out the back of the console for an audio input, say you're on a live stream and you're watching content and you want it to come in, what you don't want is you don't want it to come into the console here, then go out the main output, back to your laptop, then it would come back into the console, back out the laptop, and you, you essentially create a feedback loop. So what this does is it allows you to say, that we're not using the stereo inputs, we're going to click this button here. We want the USB to come in through channels 9 and 10, that's your only option with this. If you click this off, you won't get anything coming out of the USB. But if you click this on, then it'll mute these two inputs and you'll just get the USB. Then here there's another button that you want to have pushed down and that will send the audio through some local monitors that you have plugged in through the monitor output on this console. So that's how you do it if you're on a live stream, uh, something like that where you're listening to content through your laptop, it's coming through the mixer to your in-person monitors. And that's everything that you need to know on how to set this console up. Again, if you want to see pricing on anything that you've seen in this video or where to buy it, there's links in the description below. Otherwise, if you have any questions about this console, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.